Hello, today's session is going to be covering Niceware's SAP label printing solutions. We'll talk about our new automation product and how that application will integrate into your SAP system, providing you flexibility for label design and also label printing to any printer that you would choose. There are three different aspects to the entire SAP integration. The, the first portion is covering the design of your label templates, making sure that you have a professional label designer that meets up with all the regulatory and compliance standards out there. So our Nice Label Pro really suits the need for any type of design, any size label, which can then be in turn printed to any type of printer on the market with a Windows driver. Uh, the next step would be the control of that label through the approval process and then you have the automation which is the actual printing of that lab label in an SAP or a uh, automated printing environment. Here's a screenshot of the Nice Label Pro interface. This is our main label designer that's used to create any type of label out there. You would first set up your label width and height, then add any text objects, barcodes, or variable fields that would be connecting to data from SAP. It's a very nice uh, interface, Windows 8 compatible, all the way down to Windows 2000. So it's a very flexible tool for any designer out there. The second portion after design would be the control. This is our label lifecycle management tool and keeps track of your label templates, giving you a web interface for your management of the labels, your data, and anything else regarding your label printing. So this product is called the Control Center. This Control Center is keeping track of everything that you're designing, keeping it in one consolidated uh, menu, as well as uploading your labels to a central repository so those templates can be validated by approved users in your organization. We can use Windows Authentication or set up new authentication inside NiceLabel to determine which user has control access to design labels, print them, or access any of the utilities inside of the Control Center. And this Control Center is really controlling your labeling. It's controlling it across your entire supply chain. Since you have many different label design users as well as print operators, it's a great tool to make sure you meet up with the FDA and GHS requirements for labeling and also allow the masses to design or print labels across your organization. And this type of control is really necessary when you're talking with FDA or chemical users who need to print these specific labels with stringent requirements, different warnings on them for hazardous materials. So it's a great solution that allows you to uh, get approvals, make sure that approved label is the one that is going to be printed in production so there's no chargebacks that are issued. And recently in the supply chain, there's been a scandal with horse meat found in different burgers or even from Ikea with food that they're serving. So this is a good example of how issues can happen in the supply chain and how you need appropriate software to control the different items that are being processed or produced so you can find the originating source location as well as the destination of where that product was shipped to. And really this is uh, coming from the horse's mouth here. Trans traceability, transparency, visibility over your entire supply chain, making sure that correct label is issued on that correct product and making sure you have a strong brand image based on all of these uh, different uh, aspects of the organization. So control is giving you centralized label lifecycle management, controlling that label through the entire life of it, from when it's printed to placed on the package and then meeting its final destination. There's different regulatory standards I spoke about with FDA and also GHS requirements, many other global standards as well that have stringent requirements for design and printing of those labels. 
So now we're giving you that security, giving you a transparency of what's going on in your printing environment, and also ability to trace that product back. So giving you that brand consistency, protection, quality and risk management, so there's going to be less risk for chargebacks, or if issues happen, you'll be on top of those issues before it gets uh, in to be too big of a deal. Any other label change requests can be made on the fly. Our storage server allows you to uh, keep track of labels in different directories and also change the version back to a previously designed template that may have not had a change made to it. So you can go back through time and pinpoint specific labels and identify what happened to them through the entire life of it. So the control center is really uh, an ideal solution when you're talking about SAP printing. It's not handling the printing, so to say, but it's handling the management of those templates so SAP can print the correct information. We talked about versioning and approval workflows, keeping track of the version of that label as it's modified over time and reverting back to previous versions. That's a great capability of this control center. Then we have the approval workflows. So you can set up multiple users to have access to approving the templates. So after the label is designed, it's checked back in and allows the user to send a message to a first approver and then also a second approver to approve that label or reject it. And then it's used in the production printing for SAP. Also, we have electronic signatures for individuals who are handling these type of workflows and updates and messaging what is modified last. We have logging of what's going on. Every single print job is logged so we can keep track of what was printed at what time, by what user, and even how many labels are printed with the actual data that went onto those label templates. So you can go back and even reprint if you wish. We have centralized managed licensing in this control center, so you can keep control of all of your networked users, how many licenses are available, and also all of your automation servers. We talked about reprinting of labels, plus also printer management and alerts. That is allowing you to see all of your printers connected through the network, check their statuses, and if an error happens, you can enable alerts to notify users to their email or as an instant message or an RSS feed. So there's a lot of different methods to make sure your print operators and IT staff are aware of any downtime or any potential issues happening. Plus we give you a great modernized user interface with a Windows 8 look and feel but none of the pains that Windows 8 has for usability. You can see the nice ribbon at the top of the screen giving you access to the different menus inside of the control center from the overview to print management and on this slide the document stored server. So you can see different directories where you could save your labels, your databases, your images for different sites and segregate them so you know what labels go with which site for their printing. And when you right click on any object or any label here, you can get a breakdown of the revision history, you know, check the label out so you can make changes to it, then you can check it back in so you'll get a revision of what happened there and the next user can go ahead and check it back out so they can make changes. So basically you're getting a breakdown of what happened to this item and uh, what is the history of it. Then you can manage deleting them or moving them to different directories. The administration tab, this is a, a great view to see uh, your different settings for versioning and workflows. As you can see here towards the bottom of the screen. You can enable versioning so you can see the different versions of the label over time. And then the workflows allow you to see the different uh, notifications here. So you're going to configure your system with the SMTP settings for your email clients. And then you will be able to set up the different emails for when the draft is created of that template, the first and second approval, and then after that approval or rejection, you can set up emails for those users to be notified. So you can do a one-step or a two-step process here. 
and when you're talking FDA or GHS, those are stringent standards that these type of clients will have in the request for quote, determining who modified labels, the history of that template, and also uh, if this label is approved or not. And when you go into the stored server, even click on an automation trigger in this new automation product, your configuration is saved in an MISX file, as you can see here. So you can see the breakdown of what happened to this file over time through the workflows, checking out, checking in the template, and by who made those modifications and at what time. The history tab is a nice interface to view what happened or what was printed over time. So you can pinpoint a specific print job, if something happened, or if there's a ribbon wrinkle somewhere in that job, you can go ahead and trace that print job back and reprint that specific template or the entire batch. And if you have a ton of print activity, you can do custom sorting and filtering of those labels so you can pinpoint that specific job if there's a plethora of them. Now the print management tab, this is where you can view all of your various workstations across your printing network. So you can see the different printers, you can pause them remotely from this web interface, see if you're using a native nice driver, and also check their status. And if you have bi-directional communication with this printer, you can get custom feedback back and forth. So this program will notify you if a print head is up or a variety of different errors that that printer supports. So when you get the control center enterprise as well as the automation enterprise, this would be the ideal solution for SAP customers. This allows you to have multiple users designing and also integrating with the SAP host system. So you uh, accomplish your regulatory requirement standards. We definitely have that built into the product. You can have multiple sites handling printing and it's really ideal for these Fortune 500 companies who have the needs for versioning, approval workflows, and electronic signatures. I mentioned chemical labeling with GHS and then the FDA 21 CFR Part 11 standard, which specifically hints at versioning and approval. And here's another slide with a little more information on the Food and Drug Administration guidelines for electronic records, electronic signatures. So basically, they're really stringent requirements because of the uh, uh, pieces involved and what they're labeling in any potential prescriptions or drugs or uh, in biotech or contract research organizations. You know, there's a lot of things that can go wrong and people's lives are at stake. So really stringent requirements for these type of FDA users. Then when you talk about GHS, this is the Global Harmonization System of Classification and Labeling. When you're dealing with chemicals, you know, lives are at risk as well if you have the wrong warnings on those specific templates or the wrong symbols to determine any warnings of this chemical as well. You can see these red and black symbols at the top of the screen. These are basically built into our Nice Label Pro design tool. They're in the clip art gallery, so you have very high resolution images you can easily add on to your template. We talked about design of the templates, we talked about control with our control center enterprise, and now we're talking about the automation enterprise. This is from any ERP, any type of host system, WMS, but today we're specifically talking about SAP users. A lot of Fortune 500 clients have SAP, and SAP controls their data for the whole global organization. So this automation enterprise really fills the gap for label printing support. We can drive any of your printers across the entire organization, whether they're thermal or inkjet or laser printers. We just have to have the printer supported on the Windows network. So with this tool, there's no coding required. You have our label designer to set up the labels, and then we just run them through the server on a centralized uh, server PC. So this computer is going to be routing that job to the appropriate printer on the network.
So you have printer independence, you have label design independence. So those are the main two needs of these SAP users. I talk with a lot of SAP clients who just adopted SAP, didn't know there were limitations for their printing. So instead of going through more programmatic methods of designing and printing labels, they can use our tools that are very flexible, a nice bolt-on, and a product that is supported. So it's really easy to configure. That's probably one of the number one benefits of using this automation tool. Very easy to set up, configure with your print network, and it's basically a bolt-on to your current system. The main challenges may be designing your label templates or implementing it on multiple servers across your organization. So usually these are rollout plans that don't always happen at one time. But we can handle high speed printing. The new Automation Enterprise is much faster than our past NiceWatch server. It's multi-threaded and it's also 64-bit now. So it's very fast. It can harness uh, memory on your Windows 2008 R2 or even the 2012 server. We have different backup situations for failover, redundancy, as well as development servers or quality assurance servers. So there's many different scenarios that our NiceWare team can work with you on to architect a solution that will work for you. We have the real-time printer statuses, centralized management, which we already talked about. For the print job, how that is going to work, your user is going to be interacting inside the SAP application. They're going to select their label, select their data, select their printer location, and then the job is going to get queued up and sent down to the automation server, which our automation product is going to be on a server somewhere in your environment, which has access to all of your different printer locations. So as the job is sent down from SAP, the user doesn't even know the nice label product is there. We're just processing the jobs behind the scenes as a service, and we're routing them to location one, two, or three. So it's a very clean method of printing, which gives you full flexibility to drive any printer. So when you set up the automation product with your current environment, you have a couple different options here. There's many options, but I'll only speak about the ones that are used with SAP today. You have one of the most common approaches is using the file trigger. So SAP queues up an XML file, which is sent down to a file folder somewhere on your network. So the automation is monitoring that folder for any incoming files. In this case, it's an XML file, which contains the structure, the data. It tells you what printer this is going to the correct data and label file. So it combines it all together. So this is what the trigger is doing here inside the automation. It's really the brains behind the printing. You can have another method which is sending it through the TCP IP option, that socket. So data is sent through that specific port. SAP is configured to hit that port. In automation, it will light up at that point, then sending the print request to the appropriate printer that's specified inside that file. So this is all an automated approach. Another approach is to use the HTTP trigger and uh, this is another newer feature that's used for SAP users. There's also an SAP AII which is another method of sending that data across. So similar data is sent but it's just a different way of sending it. Different technology users have different, uh, uh, you know, different needs and also uh, have different skill sets for what they're used to and uh, what they like to, uh, to use for different triggers. So it's really up to that operator in their current environment. And when you get the further breakdown of these different uh, triggers, there's a lot of different things you can do. We're basically opening up the label, we're going to select the printer, and we're going to print the label. So you can see these different actions that are set up and you're basically going to compile the trigger with these different actions and these different capabilities. You can see there's tons of different things you can do to send data back and forth, but uh, it's really up to the user to get as complicated as they want. But the new automation, it's very easy to set up these type of filters. So when you set up your specific uh, configuration and you set up, say, your file drop, 
you have your file drop tab and you also have your XML filter. So when you connect this uh, application up to a sample XML file that you have and your label, it's going to pull in all these different variables that are available. And it's going to do some mapping for you. You can see we have some header information saying this is an SAP XML file. And then we go into the different items or the different variables from your printer name, your label name, and quantity, and also different variable information that's going to be printed on your label. So you basically have to match up these different elements. And we have an auto mapping tool inside the product that makes it very, very easy. And as you see here under the file drop tab, you have the several different actions that were created for this job. We have our specific data filter that's set up which matched up the variables that I just showed you, the data mapping here, and we have the open label, so we're going to identify the correct label file, we have the set printer, and we also have the print label. So this is configuring and triggering printing. So when we get a request from SAP, all these different actions are going to occur then the label is going to get printed out. So it's just a routine that, that automation is configured to uh, follow. Now if you're using an HTTP server, you can add the run AII XML command file. This is just another way of sending that data down to the automation server. So there's a couple different ways to initiate printing from SAP. And what do we architect SAP implementations. Some customers have global implementations, others just have a site or multiple sites in the US for example. So there's many different types of scenarios and regional locations that have the needs for printing. So NiceWare's team and our workflow specialists, we analyze all the information regarding their printing, their labels, their regional locations, backup needs, development needs, and we put that together and create a architecture. And here's one example of many different regional sites that had the need for label printing. And you don't want to just have one server that's handling printing for the entire global organization. You don't want to print or send a job across many different states or countries uh, because there's the possibility for latency or lag. You want to keep the automation locally at, at, at each region so you have fast printing and um, you know, fast processing of that job. So this is where NiceWare's team comes into play and we help you architect that solution based around your printing requirements. So we can help you with backup servers, redundancy, failovers, quality assurance servers. So this is really our specialty. And when we talk about these different servers, we get into support and creating a support option that works with your team. And also uh, training, so we can remotely install this application, remotely configure, we can even go on site, or we set up specific training sessions on how to use the program after it's configured and implemented. So the customer can be able to use the application after the install and be able to grow with the product on their own. And now I'll step into our automation demonstration. Now for the live demonstration, I'm going to show you the different tools inside of the Automation Enterprise application. So you can see how the trigger is created and then how it's implemented. Plus I'll show you a simulation of dropping an XML file to a folder simulating the printing from SAP and so you can see how it is registered and how it is logged in the system. The uh, SAP application is going to be set up for an XML file drop here and this automation product is going to have a trigger set up. So you can see the XML file drop is already created. If I create edit, you can see the settings that are enabled. So we have several different tabs. This first general tab is showing my desktop where I have my folder configured to basically it's a hot folder looking for XML data coming down. 
So it's automatically going to detect changes inside this folder. Then we have a couple other tabs here for more advanced functionality. If we go into the variables tab, this is where I can see all the different variables that are available. Now finally my actions tab, I have set up a data filter here and below that I have my actions. So I have open label, I've tied this to my label name which is inside of my XML file. I have my set printer which is tied to my printer variable that's listed inside the XML. And then we have the print label. So if you go to the XML file filter, this will give you a breakdown of how the XML file was diced up. And on the right side of the screen, you see an example of this XML file, where you can see different components. So on the left side, as I click through these different variables, it's going to highlight each of them. So you can see different information tied to that variable, and then you can see the raw data that's going to be printed. So basically, I went through and mapped out and combined printer from the XML with the printer from the label file so we can identify you know, the appropriate printer in all these other fields. So you can import your different data structure, basically import your XML, and then filter it out from there. So if you go back to the configuration items tab, you can see the trigger and the data filter that I just showed you. So we have quick tabs that you can have access to to uh, interact with the data without closing out the field. So when you're, des when you're done designing this configuration, you can deploy it. And this is going to deploy it to your manager. So if I minimize the screen and I'll open up the automation manager. Now this is what is actually processing the jobs. So you can stop or start the specific trigger in automation server. You can see the logging of what's going on. But if I minimize this, I'll show you I have my drop folder selected. It's currently empty. I have my automation file. This contains all my configuration in the MISX file. I have my label. I'll open this up for you for a second. This is the uh, label designed in Nice Label Designer Pro version 6. And you'll see the different variables on this template. So you can see they're all empty, basically waiting for data to populate. And I have other fixed data here, which are my header names. So whenever you're designing a label, and you're done designing it, you can just go Save As and you can click on the stored server and this allows you to save it in that central repository so it can be uh, modified or used later. So I'll show you the folder that I used. I have my labels directory with this label file already saved. So you have central access from any of your design users. They can save it to that central repository and then that label can be approved and used for printing. Then we have our XML file. I showed you this inside of the automation product, but this just gives you another visual of it. So I'm going to print to my Datamax printer. I currently have it paused for this demonstration, so you can see it hit the queue. My label name and the location of it and the different variable data. And you can see in this example, I have my demo label specified inside the stored server. So you can see the actual path of it. It's going to be pulling it right from that server instead of to uh, a local folder on this PC. So you can you know, print it either way, but this just shows you both methods. And now this is the uh, user interface for the print manager, which is controlling the storage server, it's controlling all the different printers across my organization. So it gives you, uh, you know, a very clean interface to manage everything from. 
So if I uh, copy my label here, and I'm going to paste it in the drop folder to simulate printing. You can see my print queue. So I'll paste it in, it immediately hits my queue. Now if I go into my automation manager, you can see I processed that one job. If I click on the log, I can see this last print job, expand it out, trigger was executed, it pulled this XML file that was sent to it, it implemented the SAP XML filter, referenced this label name, and also printed to this specific printer. So you can see a, basically a breakdown of all the different actions that occurred. So this is a, a simple overview of the XML file drop method with SAP.